Hey everybody and welcome to Truck King. So on my right, the 2024 2500 Silverado with the Duramax. And the question I'm trying to answer today is, is this going to be my next truck? So behind the Silverado, you'll see my grand design. That's a 35 foot fifth wheel, weighs in at about 12 and a half thousand pounds, empty, has a GVWR of 15,000 pounds. Now this is the truck, or pardon me, this is the trailer that I towed all through the US last winter with, you can just see it over there, my 2019 Ram 2500. And even though I didn't have any issues with the weight, and there's a whole video and arguments about that, I didn't like the way it rode. I mean, I had all kinds of problems with it, and honestly, I put it down to the fact that Ram uses coil springs on that truck, whereas back over here on the Silverado, GM is still using leaf springs. Now, we're just getting ready to hook up because I want to see if my theory is correct. I mean, I can guess all day long or I can go out and drive it. So we're going to plunk my trailer on this truck and off we'll go down the highway. And that should tell me in about 15 minutes whether I'm right or not. Okay, the other factor in this equation is the hitch. So rather than a traditional fifth wheel hitch, last winter I got this Kurt Crosswing and it works off of the gooseneck ball. And one of the key features, and the one I was looking for, was the fact that it is eight and a half inches behind the axle. In other words, the exact center line of the truck. Now, most people will tell you that's not a good idea, but from a clearance point of view, yeah, that's what I wanted. I needed something because this particular trailer has a really bulbous nose and I had a hard time dealing with the fact that on a regular hitch, I just didn't have the clearance that I wanted on my truck. Now, this Chev is only like one inch longer than my Ram as far as the bed goes, but to recreate the towing experience, I have put exactly the same hitch over here so that everything is about the same. Once again, once I get down on the highway, I really want to see whether or not with this setup and this truck, it's still doing this weird back and forth swaying. And go back to the other video to check out what I told you about that. So let's talk a little bit about weights because some of you are already saying, well, 2500 Ram, 2500 GM, what the hell's the difference? Well, I'll tell you. The first one is that Ram, and this is, has everything to do with licensing and other government bureaucracy, does not go over the 10,000 pound GVWR. So, however, GM does. So this truck, the GVWR is 11,350. And that additional weight reflects itself in the payload. Over there on my Ram, payload 2210. Over here on the Chevy, payload 2987. I mean, that's like, what, 700 pounds difference? And whereas this particular solitude, as far as pin weight is concerned, is overweight on my Ram, it is not anywhere near this payload limit. So, I mean, a lot of smoke and mirrors here, folks. If, if, you, if that's what you're thinking, you're right. So, regardless, off we're gonna go, because you know what, I've figured this out, man. Proof is in the pudding, so you can do math all day long, but until you put your butt in the seat and feel how it tows, you really don't know what you're playing with. Now folks, the rubber has met the road and we are out here in the 24 Silverado with dad's fifth wheel on it. And we are on the 401. We came directly to the highway because as anyone who tows knows, speed makes a big difference. Going at a slow speed, you're not going to feel the same things as moving at high speeds. And dad's experience with his trailer was mostly issues at highway speeds. So uh, here we are on the 401, slightly overcast, rainy day, a little bit of wind in the air. So you're dealing with a bit of wind, not really windy. And all that is to say now, dad, 
let's compare and contrast. How is the Chevy pulling this trailer as compared to your Ram? Well, just to recap, the Ram 2500, and again, I suspect that the coil spring suspension was the biggest culprit, would uh, simply, the, the trailer would, would lean side to side. It would just rock back and forth, back and forth. And it would become one of those harmonic distortion things where if I didn't change speed or give it some steering input, the thing just wanted to keep up. on going so I had to break that momentum which of course gets really really old after a while not to mention we finally dialed it in somewhere between 62 and 65 miles an hour so kind of max 105 kilometers an hour that was about it that's as much as I could do anything above that it would just suddenly take off mm -hmm. so I mean the first thing I'm looking at here in this Chev is at around 105 kilometers an hour, what's it doing? And right now I'm doing 110, and I've got nothing. I'm feeling it just the slightest bit, but the truck seems to be counteracting that force from just, the trailer. I mean, I'm hands off. Hands off, yeah. And it's holding its lane, and the trailer, I see the slightest bit of motion, but it's significantly better, I would say by half than on the ram so that's the first thing yeah and, and i think i just want to reiterate too as many variables as we could eliminate we did so it's the same hitch and you pulled it down this same highway so again feeling those things you really can you know directly compare yeah and it's also the short bed on both of the trucks True. granted the chevy is one inch longer sure both diesels then the ram also both diesels um yeah, so if I was simply, you know, replacing 125 with another 25, it would appear to me that this would be the better choice at this particular moment. However, at this point, I'm taking a bit of a lesson from the internet because it never hurts to have a little more truck than you need. So I will probably go 3,500. In addition to which, I think the other issue I might have had here was with the hitch that I have because it's eight and a half inches behind my axle. So that gave me more clearance, which was important, but let's face it, you want the pin to be as close to dead nuts over the axle as you can get it. So if I go to an eight foot bed, I can go with a conventional hitch um, and get it right over the axle. That should also help my stability. Sure. But right now, yeah. You know what? And I'm going to put this down to the difference between the Leafs and the coils. Sorry, Ram. Yeah. You, you ride better when you're empty, but for lots of weight, I don't see that the coils do me any favors. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And I think we should just touch again on moving up to a 3500 because we can both agree, especially with this package with the extra payload, you could be within your numbers with that trailer. Load it up in the trailer, you might end up a little bit over, but not by much. Um, so you could basically be there, but yeah, Dad, it's, it does feel good to be over trucked. And this is where we get back to, like you said, the internet comment section. It can usually honestly be comical. Some guy comes into a comment section and says, hey, I just bought a new sea -Doo. And the next response is, you need a 3500 dually. Like the internet always pushes you into a bigger yeah, vehicle. Yeah, exactly. And geez, don't read comments too much. They'll make you bananas. Yeah, where it can be unnecessary. However, it also has to do with what you're doing with the tow vehicle. If you were towing this trailer, I don't know, to your campground that's half an hour away, you'd probably be fine with this truck, right? Because you're not going far. You can afford to be stressed out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, what dad and my mom do, she's back there too, because she's truck shopping too. They drive all the way down to the Southern United States from here in Ontario. So if you're spending days on the road, you want to have that comfort. You want to have that stress-free drive. And that's why over-trucking yourself is a good idea. It, it can usually never hurt Sometimes it just feels unnecessary, but uh, yes, I think that overall we'd agree going bigger is usually better. Yeah, in this particular instance, I mean, you can be ridiculous, so don't be ridiculous, however. And, you know, I just want to stress here too, because people say, well, why did you get the 2500 Ram if you didn't think it would work with the other trailer? The simple fact of the matter is, is that I had a, another trailer before the Grand Design, which weighed about 2,000 pounds less. That was a good match. I took that to Texas and ran 70 miles an hour all the way down and back, no issues. Um, however, 
add 2,000 pounds made all the difference. That and, and like I said, in this particular hitch, um, because I changed trailers, but I didn't want to change trucks, so I tried to make it work. Also something that you should probably try to avoid if you can, you know. Uh, make sure you buy the trailer you really want rather than getting foot-itis and, and, you know, trading up two more feet, two more feet every other year because eventually you'll run out of truck. <laughs> yeah, and I do think that's a common story in the travel trailer industry, so I guess uh, try to use this example to learn from. <laughs> so just a couple of quick hits. Um, I love the Cummins engine. If I can't have the Cummins, I'm happy with the Duramax. That's what we have here. This year, also, it's up in power, up in torque. The other thing is that the shift points in the transmission have been pulled closer together. Much better in terms of getting off the line, but also really good as far as uh, engine braking once you're coming downhill. Because the one thing that I'm not overly impressed with in the GM is their uh, exhaust brake. Uh, Ram has definitely, definitely has the best exhaust brake. However, overall, powertrain, very, very nice. A couple of other quick things, the camera views and the, the resolution in the, uh, in the screens here is fantastic. I mean, for hooking up and for everything else. One of the really cool things now is when you put on your signal, the camera comes on and runs right down the side of the truck, down to the trailer, and you can really see how your trailer wheels are tracking as you're going through hard lefts and hard rights. Obviously, you can do that in the mirror, but actually, it's quicker to glance into the center stack mm -hmm. to see that. Yeah, so, the camera views are awesome. Yeah, so I really like that too. Mm -hmm. And, well, of course, we are driving a high country, so my goodness, it's got stuff in here that it's probably going to take me six months on the road to really use it all because I, I keep looking at things and go, what's that? What's sure. that? Well, and for 2024, the HD here has a whole new interior. And, yeah, it's really nice. This blue leather with the two-tone stitching, real wood accents, all the touchscreen. Um, yeah, they've done a really nice job on the interiors. After dropping the interior ball for a few years, right, they've really stepped it up. It's much better now. So folks, we're coming to the end of this one. Of course, there's my 2019 Ram 2500. And the issue was, I was having issues with the towing. So we're looking at the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 2500. And after today's little test drive on the highway, hills and dales up and down, uh, you know what? This is a better tow rig, certainly for the weight that I'm hauling here right now. So I'm definitely leaning in this direction. However, I still got a little more cross shopping to do, but right now I'm gonna to say to you, coil springs, leaf springs. That to me seems to be the biggest diff. So again, that's it for this one, folks. Listen, go below, hit like, hit subscribe, become a member of our channel and join. But more importantly, go down and give me your comments. I wanna hear your wisdom. If you think I'm an idiot, go right ahead. Tell me that too. I've got a thick skin. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Come back and see what I buy.